Joining us now for our weekly partnership segment with The Daily Poster is the founder of The Daily Poster himself, the one and only David Sirota. Great to see you, David. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. So we've been tracking on the show here uh, damage from those deadly tornadoes, the fact that uh, some of the worst damages were sustained at people's workplace as a candle factory in Mayfield, Kentucky, where workers were not allowed to leave hours before when they wanted to, and also at an Amazon distribution center in Illinois, where uh, we you know, have looked at the final text of a driver there who wanted to leave. Amazon wouldn't let him go, and ultimately it cost him his life. Talk to us about what you uh, uncovered here in terms of Amazon lobbyists and the rights that workers have in their workplaces. So in Illinois, uh, in the months before this disaster, uh, there was a there's legislation in the in the Democratic controlled legislature to change Illinois laws uh, to say that an employer has to have a just cause in order to terminate a, a worker. Right now, almost every state in the country is what's known as at-will employment. An employer can fire you for basically almost any reason other than reasons covered uh, in the civil rights laws. But that means if if, you're, if the, your employer doesn't like the, let's say, the color of your tie, uh, your employer can fire you. In Illinois, they were trying to change this to say that the employer has to have a just cause. Uh, now, how does that connect to the situation uh, in, in a disaster like we saw in Illinois? Well. If a worker tries to leave their workplace, uh, they can be threatened uh, with firing uh, they, under the current at-will uh, employment laws. So in other words, Amazon uh, is empowered to fire its workers if they walk off the job under at-will laws. Amazon-linked lobbying groups, business lobby groups in Illinois, were lobbying against the just cause legislation in the lead up to this disaster. Now, to be clear, we don't know uh, in Illinois whether Amazon was trying to keep its workers there uh, out of safety to try to get them to not go out into the tornado or not. But the point here is, the bottom line is, is that workers in Illinois and across the country uh, essentially do not have, in almost every state, state protections to be able to leave the workplace or to be able to do anything to make themselves safe uh, without fear of, of, of potentially being fired by their employer. And, you know, it's really interesting, David. I was reading this and looking through, which is that I don't see any consideration of this within the media. I mean, why is it that you're the only person who can seemingly dig this stuff up? People died. I mean, the initial segment, of course, happened, then they reported the investigation. But this is just clear as day here. I mean, I think it's disgraceful. Yeah, I mean, look, people's employment situation is inherently linked to whether they can blow the whistle on safety problems in the workplace, whether they can leave their workplace uh, in the middle of a natural disaster. I mean, think about how big a problem this is going to end up being. The climate change is intensifying these kinds of weather cataclysms. Uh, workers are facing more and more in the day to day. Do I have to come to work during a flood? Do I have to come to work uh, during a hu hurricane warning? Can I leave my workplace uh, during a tornado warning? Again, without fear of being fired. There were reports that in Kentucky, uh, they workers were told they might be fired if they walked off the job. Again, that connects directly to the at-will employment situation throughout the country. And you're right, the media doesn't talk about it because corporate media doesn't typically talk about things that the corporate lobby wants to keep in place. And the corporate lobby wants to keep in place a situation that employers can fire you for any reason at all. Yeah. Um, can we talk about your movie, David? Yeah, let's, <laughs> for sure, let's do it, for sure. Um, don't look up, I mean, you guys probably already know. The reviews have been amazing. Yeah. Um, did you get to go to the film premiere? Like, what is this? what has this personally been like yeah, for you, this Hollywood little star turn? Hollywood elites, what are they like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The the premiere was everything uh, that you'd imagine a premiere to be. I got to walk the red carpet. Uh, I got to see all the stars walk the red carpet. Uh, it was, you know, it was a classic, uh, one of those big spectacles. But there's one thing I think that, that I took away, one of the things I took away that was really great about it was all of the stars and the filmmaker Adam McKay, and in my own interviews on the red carpet, 
we use the opportunity to talk about the climate crisis and to talk about an even deeper crisis as well. The crisis of our media, as Sagar just mentioned, our media not mm -hmm. focusing on the real issues. And ultimately, without giving away anything about this movie, that's what this movie is about. It's about whether we as a society can take verifiable facts have them be in a media discussion without them being frivolized, without them being suppressed, without them being turned into a partisan weapon. And the sad thing about our, our society right now is that almost every important fact is put into that media machine uh, and then turned into either a partisan weapon, a culture war weapon, and not something that we are using to constructively build policies around. Yeah. Well, and what I loved about... a not all, but some of the coverage of the movie was it turned into rather than like, oh, Adam McKay made this really important commentary on climate change and our inability as a society to like deal with any real threats that are facing us. And so their response to that was to dig into this like beef between Adam McKay and Will Ferrell, <laughs> like just literally yeah. proving your po the point right. of the movie that all they care about are these like trivial personal feuds and reality TV type bullshit. Adam and I have been going back and forth on text for like the last three weeks. Every single thing like that, uh, we keep saying we're living inside the movie. I feel like we're inside <laughs> the actual movie and it's actually horrifying. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Well, David, congratulations. Tell people where, where, when they can watch the movie, where, all of that. Sure. Uh, the movie is in theaters now. It's in select theaters, about 500 across the country. And oh, it will cool. be on Netflix uh, on starting on Christmas Eve. And I hope everybody will watch it. Uh, I, I want to say one other thing. It is, it is not a movie designed to make you feel comfortable. Uh, it's hilarious. It's fun. But I think the reactions are pretty intense because it's not a movie that wants to make you feel comfortable. Interesting. Gotcha. Well, awesome. um, next week, maybe that segment, because that will post on Christmas Eve yeah, when the movie's right. coming out. Let's talk about the movie. Soccer and I uh, will watch it if we're able. You could get a screeners or yes, whatever we need perhaps. to do there. So that we'll we can just talk directly about the, the movie itself so that people can, you know, get a little reminder of it the day that it comes out. But Fantastic. David, Looking forward congrats. To it. Yep. And thanks for all the great work you Thank do. you, David. Thanks to both of you. Our Amen. pleasure. Thank you guys for watching. We'll have more for you later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.